Radu Rusu, come on up. I hope I pronounced that right. All right. Here's the clicker. Thank you. And I'm going to shake your hand. Yes. How do I operate this? Uh, Just here. I think you're easy. a scientist. You know, easy. you're brilliant. Come on, easy. you can figure that out. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Evan. How do I how do I follow that presentation? That was quite uh, quite quite amazing. Um, First question here, who's, uh, who's from, I mean, I saw Serge already, who's from academia? Who's a researcher, student? Good, good, okay. So we're gonna go through an hour of equations and a lot of mathematical formulations of, you know, all these things here, I'm kidding. Um, I usually give talks like this at uh, scientific conferences, so the CVPR and ICCVs and things like that. This is a different venue, so I'll, I'll keep it short and, and I'll see what we can do. So um, I guess I'm with this company called, called Fusion, where, uh, you know, we've, we've started looking at the um, mobile imaging space some, some years ago. Um, and I, again, I'm not really sure which ones of you have heard of a company called Willow Garage. Okay, there's a few. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Um, so, so a lot of the scientists that are involved at Fusion actually came from Willow Garage. Um, we were responsible for developing a lot of tools um, in 3D image processing and so on. So for those of you that haven't heard of Willow Garage, this was a very interesting company in, uh, in Menlo Park in California, uh, developing advanced robotics. Um, long story short, uh, Scott Hassan, one of the early Google uh, people, uh, founded the company with the hope to build you know, open source software and open architectures for robotics. Um, and I guess you know, a few years in, we realized that actually building commander data from Star Trek might take a little bit longer than initially anticipated. So we started speeding off companies. So I think in about, Two and a half years, we spun off nine companies. Uh, anyway, one of the things that we've done there is uh, this initiative called uh, Point Cloud Library, which is a 3D image uh, processing uh, s uh, software toolkit. Um, and you know, in time, this actually grew quite large. It's, it's one of the world's largest open source uh, ecosystems right now in 3D image processing. So I definitely encourage you to use it. The reason why I guess we started Fusion is because we got a little bit frustrated of just uh, working on building blocks and, and sort of like research algorithms and never really quite taking one thing uh, you know, all the way. Um, so Fusion was created with the purpose to take all that know-how, all that knowledge that we actually had, narrow it down to one particular problem and just build something vertically and just try to go directly to market and see what happens. Uh, really foolish. <laughs> uh, anyway, the team is about 25 people and I guess there's like some statistics here, we just close a series B, it doesn't really matter so much. Um, but this is where we are right now and as I mentioned before, we kind of come from this space of you know, in the intersection of robotics, uh, machine learning, uh, computer vision, 3D image processing, and so on. So here you see a few of the projects that we were involved with, you know, from robots bringing your beer to your office if you're lazy and don't want to get up from your chair, uh, to folding towels and laundry, to autonomous car driving, and a bunch of other things. Um, so these are things that we tackled in, in the past, you know, five, five plus years. So at Fusion, we actually wanted to take uh, the opportunity to analyze what's working out there in terms of consumers. So one thing that I want, I want to mention is that Fusion is a B2C company, at least for the time being. Um, and, you know, we've been talking about like 3D processing for a long time. It was kind of hard for us to understand what, why don't consumers actually enjoy 3D imaging as much as we, the scientists, do. So we started by analyzing what, it, what do they really enjoy. And obviously, you know this, the, the answer already. There's like 99% of the visual data that's, that's shared online falls into two representations, photography and video, right? So one of them is a slice of time and space, and the other one captures time. So we started asking, like, why are these two representations so powerful? What makes them so, you know, ubiquitous on the internet? And we couldn't find an answer. And the only answer that we found is like, well, they were kind of like there forever. You know, we've had them since birth. When I was born, my mom to the, took a 2D picture of me, and I didn't question that, right? Like, mom, why, why 2D, right? In fact, it's even worse. They, they predate the internet, they predate computers, uh, you know, a hundred years ago, someone captured light through a lens and made a film camera, and then when computers came with digitized experience, nothing's really changed scenes, right, in terms of the capture process. Yes, there's progress in certain, you know, sort of small verticals there, like you have a company like Lytra trying to, like, reimagine the, the capture process, but not, not, it, it's, it's still small. Same thing with video, right? We wanted to have motion pictures, Hollywood kind of, like, made them happen, and now we have them as MPEGs on our computers. So... You know, that's, that's the first fact. The second one is we already know that mobile is surpassing desktop and so on. So we have this like amazing ability, as Evan said, to just capture data continuously. Um, and obviously he already showed this. This is uh, Mary Mika from Kleiner Perkins predicting the amount of digital data that we're creating and sharing on the internet. 
So, so basically, what this graph shows is that you know, within two years, we're doubling the amount of data on the internet, right? We're pretty much saying like nothing that we've done before matters. It's a new internet every two years or something, right? So one of the things that we thought was missing, and again, this is us coming from this like 3D imaging perspective, uh, is the notion of space. So uh, you've probably seen this movie. Um, I should actually give credit. This is a snippet from, from one of the latest Star Trek movies. And you kind of see here like a young Captain Kirk navigating, you know, in space on a, on a tablet, right? It's all very futuristic, of course. And as computer vision people might, might think right now, that's quite impossible, right? How can you do that from a single viewpoint? Well, you probably can't. But the, the, the whole idea in itself is quite, quite interesting, right? Uh, so we started asking ourselves, like, what is this? Is it a 3D picture? You know, what is it exactly? It's space capture. So we started charting, you know, the two dimensions, time and space, and just, you know, started looking at the existing file format. So you got photography in the middle, as a slice of time and space. You got video, right, capturing time. You got animated GIFs, sort of capturing time. Panoramas, kind of capturing space. And then we wanted to be over there, right? So we wanted to create a technology that abstracts time completely, meaning that it shouldn't matter how fast I move in the world. I could move around the car in half an hour, in five seconds, the end result should be the same. It should be a graph of visual data with transition so I can move in that afterwards. Okay, so one of the other things that we sort of like had to deal with is, you know, we were always stuck in that space of, you know, point clouds and registration and ICP and 3D and meshes and octrees and so on. Um, and that's not something consumers want, as it turns out, right? In fact, what consumers want is this. Quite a shock, right? So basically what we set out to do is, is create a new visual format. Um, you know, for the lack of a better name, we call it Fuse. Um, and also an application that's sort of exhibiting the visual format. And as I said before, the goal is to just move around the world and capture data and let technology do its thing, right? You, you create this visual graph, and fundamentally you're competing with existing formats like you know, photography and video and panoramas and so on, right? And the goal is to remove, it's, we're, we think we're the closest to panoramas as, as, as anything else from, from those visual formats, but the goal is to remove all the limitations that panoramas have. As you know, panoramas are just 2D pictures sort of like warped on a sphere on a cylinder. They can't deal with motion and you can't create a panorama of an object, right? And then maybe, the, you know, the final thing is we really want to take advantage of these wonderful sensors that we have on, on our mobile phones, like the touch sensitive screens and gyroscopes and kind of like give, give people the ability to navigate in that space, you know, have them be active participants for the first time. So for those of you who are interested in the technology, you know, behind the hood, um, there's a lot of interesting things happening there in the, in the space of sensor fusion. There's a lot of, you know, um, structure from motion and 3D reconstruction going on for parts of the world that are static. Obviously, as you know, if you're moving a device in space and the world is sort of dynamic, you can't really reconstruct in 3D. The goal here, however, is not to create 3D models for the, the sake of you know, 3D printing or anything like that. The goal is to create them for the sake of actually bringing back to the screen virtually rendered images that look photorealistic. So for consumers, it's basically like this, right? You move around in space, and then we create this like, infinite band of space that's like really nice and smooth, and you know, you're just navigating it afterwards. Let me actually just skip this. So we actually launched this product in December last year, uh, right before New Year's Eve. Um, and we really didn't try, we really didn't want to create like another social network, to be completely honest. We really wanted to take the technology and incorporate it in something else. But as you know, if you're creating a new file format, it's quite hard to do that, right? Because like existing software, you know, won't be able to recognize it. Um, so we set out to kind of create a product, you know, this like application called Fuse with, you know, some interesting UI resembling other existing solutions on the market. And we added some of our own uh, sort of like, you know, uh, tidbits on, you know, galleries and channels and whatnot and messaging and, and guides. You'll, you'll get to see this more if you actually download the application and play with it. Um, and then once you actually have this kind of like powerful new format with 3D information under the hood, you can do interesting things like visual tagging, right? Which actually, all, it all comes for free because it's part of the format. So now I can go around and create these like physical post-its that I place in the image space and I can annotate parts and I can send people to like websites. So like, where can I buy that wheel? Well, you just click there. And of course they're sticky. They're, they're, part, of the, they're part of the image. So obviously, this, uh, without realizing, we've sort of created a revolution right now in, in fashion and retail and e-commerce because everybody wants to tag things and point people up, you know, out to the, to the websites where you can actually purchase these things. 
one of the things that we also wanted to do is, uh, is actually be able to take the discrete space that our cameras give us and create an infinitely smooth uh, interpolated space. Um, so that's what you see in the upper part of the image. Uh, we kind of like make it all, all very nice and smooth. Um, and we deal with, with motion quite well. I can actually talk to you, the, uh, the people that are interested, I can talk to you afterwards about it. What you see in the, in the bottom part is this whole notion of like loop closure or slam, where you can go around and move around the world and then realize that you've been there before and sort of make the whole thing uh, move, uh, move continuously. There's no beginning and end. There's really a lot of things to be said here. Unfortunately, I'm going to be running out of time soon. Um, um, about this kind of like infinitely smooth interpolation where this kind of resembles a 10,000 frames per second video or something. Um, however, if you've ever recorded slow motion video or like, you know, high frame rates, you realize it's actually quite large in size. So you have like hundreds of megabytes. Um, these are like one megabytes on, on like average. So really, really cool. And of course, this whole concept of solving consumer problems that like we as scientists initially didn't really care about, but they're quite interesting. Uh, like how do I actually record a selfie of myself and maybe the Golden Gate Bridge in the background? Um, so creating this concept of panorama selfies, which is, which is again, like quite interesting. Um, you see one of my colleagues here goofing off in the bottom part. Anyway, um, to our sort of surprise, um, this actually well, you know, became very popular as an application uh, early this year, um, and you know, it went viral in the US and Japan and a lot of countries in Europe, surpassing many of the existing solutions on the market, not in this space, but in just in photography in general. Um, so we were trending like up to like number four in, in, in the overall like app category in photo video. And in some countries we went all the way up to number one, like surpassing Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and so on. Um, so my takeaway message from here is that basically we feel like the world is actually quite ready to experience something uh, completely different than, um, than you know, what we actually had before. Uh, so this notion of space kind of like pops up for the first time in our opinion where we've been looking at the world very, you know, sort of interestingly, only from the perspective of time capture, and we as human beings can't really control time. Like, you know, how many seconds have passed since we entered this room? We have no idea unless we look at our watches, right? But space is something we can actually control quite well, right? Thank you so much. <laughs>